Hey teens, what's up? It's Sister Angela. I know it's been a really long time, but if I could just have a moment of transparency, it's been a lot going on in my life. I've been dealing with anxiety. I just been in not such a good space. So I didn't feel like I was available to pour out to you and to do things for you. And so keep praying for me. I am getting better. I'm not 100%, but I'm getting better, okay? So I just wanted to be open and honest with you. Let you know I am dealing with some things and I just had to take a step back. Take a step back, regroup, and pray. And I know God's going to work it all out, right? So as you know, Father's Day is next Sunday. And we wanted to do something special for the fathers. We wanted to get it to where our fathers can drop some wisdom and some knowledge into us. Um, so today you will be hearing an interview or watching an interview between my brother and my father. It is um, a blessing to, to have a father in your life that loves you, that wants to be there. So I don't take it for granted at all. Um, but I encourage you, like if you don't have a relationship with your father, I encourage you to use some of the tools in this video to go and restore that relationship with him. Or if you um, don't even have a father figure, find some deacons in the church, find the pastor, find a minister, someone that you can look up to and glean to and get some wisdom from, okay? So enjoy and watch this next to your father or your father figure. See you in a bit. Yes, I'm Anthony Lee Nickens. And this is my son, Anthony Marcellus Nickens. So our names are distinguished by our middle name. So who else are you the father of? Maybe that's what she wants me to ask too. Okay, I have actually four children. The first one was was Steve that's an Antoinette Nickens. And our second um, child was Angela Nickens. Angela Monique. I don't know if, I, if they want me to reveal the middle names, but and then our son Marcus Isaiah Nickens. He has a wife, Chantel, with two children and one on the way, making us <clears throat> uh, grandparents three times. Three times. And uh, then it's our son, the youngest, Anthony Marcellus. So what was your life like uh, as, as a teenager? My life as a teenager was interesting. Mm -hmm. I, that's when I was really being serious about seeking the Lord. And uh, it turned out that I learned that God, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, <clears throat> was my best friend. And uh, I read scriptures about being friends with God. Uh, in St. John, where it talks about, Jesus said, you are my friends if you do what I command you. Well, something that you uh, did as a teenager that you wish that you could have done differently now. Well, as a teenager, one thing, I was more of an introvert, you would say, and uh, I didn't get <laughs> involved too much in school. I, I probably would, yeah, I would say for sure, if I could do it over, I would be a little more involved and try to reach out more to my classmates. And, you know, I could have at least joined the, <laughs> they had a Youth for Christ uh, club at our school. And I could have maybe got into that. Um, <laughs> I think I was more interested in just basically getting good grades and getting out of there. I didn't particularly like school all that much, but it was, school was, it had some good experiences. Of course, teaching you, learning, that was a blessing. Uh, many of our forefathers, mothers probably, many of them wish they could go to school and didn't have that opportunity all the time. Actually, my own father, uh, he dropped out of school, I believe in the seventh grade. And consequently, I ended up being the first, I was told that I was the first male Nickens um, in our family to graduate from high school. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> so uh, graduating, was it another success? I mean, yeah, another I had no success. idea about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know how broad that went 
far as the family, but at least, at least my a father and uncles and grandfather, you know, but among them, I was the first to graduate from high school. Well, thank you up, brother. <laughs> thank you up. Those are the things that happen, just yeah. linking up with God. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. All right, so what is your relationship with your father like? I think I had a good relationship with my father. I, re I honor my father. I respect him, and I, I, I look up to him. He, uh, he was a good role model, a good role model, um, hardworking man. Uh, he was comical. Uh, at, <laughs> he was uh, a good sense of humor, but he uh, he had a good work ethic. And he taught us coming up to uh, likewise, you know, to try to portray that as we grew, we try to instill that into us. Uh, I appreciate my father for, <clears throat> you know, many things he would do, some simple things uh, coming up. <laughs> he would uh, have us have, uh, well, I had six, uh, five brothers, by the way. Of course, uh, my three of them were pretty young, younger than me. So coming up, it was me, my brother Greg, and my oldest brother Robert. Uh, my fa father mostly would work, well, I would mostly work with my brother Gregory, and uh, some, somewhat a little with Stephen, my younger, younger brother, next younger than me. But he would, uh, you know, he would, like on trash day, he would <laughs> tell us to get up early and make sure we get the trash out before seven o'clock. <laughs> we hardly ever took a car to a shop. My dad would, any kind of problem we had with a car, he would fix it. <laughs> and that meant sometime me and my brother Greg again, we would be with him <laughs> a few times. Uh, I remember him you know, changing engines and changing transmissions. He would have, uh, have us out there under the, under the car, jacking, the, jacking up the jacking the engine up into the engine engine compartment or the transmission up into it. <laughs> but those kind of things, it helped, it helped to, to help me to appreciate, you know, being a man and being able to let me see that, you know, you can do a lot on your own if you try. So that put in me to, to somewhere do the same as I got older and the knee came up. <laughs> Yeah, so that's the kind of relationship I had with my dad. Uh, he was a loving dad. He he was a tough dad. He was strong, tough, and but he was gentle as well. It kind of reminded me of a lion. <laughs> if you ever look at male lions, uh, those are some strong and some very uh, rough animals. <laughs> If you get on the wrong side, I mean, they 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 go for the kill. But when it's when it comes to their own cubs, they let them crawl up on their necks and bite their ears. Sometimes they get a little frustrated, <laughs> shake them off a little. But for the most part, they're they're gentle with their cubs. So you know, even though they're mighty and strong, strong, they they can also be gentle. And that's how my dad. That's how I look at my dad. He was he was a tough man. But he was also a gentleman. Gentleman. <laughs> How did you feel when you found out that you were about to be a father for the first time? <laughs> well, the first time, I, th I don't think I was really ready for it the first time. When he was pregnant with our first child, my wife was. Um, well, I, I say I wasn't ready. I didn't, at that time, we hadn't planned to really be to have children at that particular time. We wanted to wait a, a year, a couple of years or two or whatever it was. We didn't think we was quite ready, but <laughs> of course uh, it happened. So we accepted it and I accepted it and uh, it began to be a, a joy. Um, we start reading books and learning how to prepare ourselves for this new addition to our family. And uh, uh, I, we would talk to the baby, or read to her, you know, and uh, start welcoming her into the family before she even 
came. And uh, for the most part, it was a it was an exciting, joyful thing. It was, you know, learning learning how to what to do to prepare for the birth and to to make it in a few words, it was exciting time to be a father. What do you think was your first obstacle as a father? <laughs> hmm. Well, the first obstacle was, like I said before, the, the firstborn baby was stillborn. Um, the baby seemed to be healthy, fine, all the way up till that day. And it was, Maxine was, you know, was due any, any moment, any uh, autopsy when, when things were checked out the reason for her death, the placenta, which is the way the baby gets its nourishment. Somehow it had aged more than it should have. And um, I, it cut off the baby's oxygen or something. And that's, that was, was the reason for her passing. <clears throat> but, you know, after she was born, we realized how beautiful we was able to see her and see how beautiful she was. And I thought I was gonna be okay holding the baby. And uh, they had warm blankets on the baby. It made it feel like she was alive. I looked down at, the, at her and uh, she was just so beautiful, but she was lifeless. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> she was lifeless, and and you know that pretty much broke me down. I uh, I cried some tears, and I just couldn't hold it hold it in. What were your feelings toward God uh, when you lost Antoinette? My feelings toward God. Mm -hmm. Oh, I knew she was in good hands. It was, my feelings was pretty much um, asking God to forgive me if I failed in any way to be what I, the father I should have been, or the husband I should have been to, to prevent that, that I could have been to prevent that from happening. But um, yeah, I had, a, I, I just look at God as he's good all the time. <laughs> He's, he makes no mistakes. So, no fault. I, I, I didn't fault God at all for, for any of that. How did you overcome that particular obstacle in your fatherhood? Uh, besides God, uh, who, who helped you throughout that process? Well, I guess I have to say God. Um, God provided, God blessed us with such a beautiful family. Uh, we just had so much family support and church members as well, um, support that that really helped us get through that time. Um, you know, we had the baby, we didn't have any insurance to cover, you know, the, the insurance that I had would not cover an uh, infant. <laughs> The way they had, had it set up. <clears throat> that was kind of weird, but uh, family, up. family came together and put the money together for us to be able to have a, got a nice, decent coffin, little pink, beautiful coffin, and, and uh, through a home fixture, real nice. Uh, <laughs> I think they even pierced their ears, had some little weird things on it. <laughs> And she was just looking like a little doll. So the family, basically, God working through the saints and the family, it really, uh, man, it just it was what we needed. It, it helped us get through pretty, pretty good. I mean, what are some words of encouragement that you would give a father uh, who has lost a child? First of all, God, you, you know, the child is in the best hands when they're in God's hands. Uh, he's the best of hands. I mean, he's the best that we can have. And, and the, he's the ultimate best. And he knows what he's doing. Um, especially if it's a young child that's, that's in the innocent stage. Um, they can be comforted in knowing that that child is going to be fine. It's, it's probably, not probably, but the child is in much better in a much better position than it would be walking on earth. <clears throat> no more trouble, no more, no pain, no problems to have to deal with. 
challenge, just at rest, at peace with God. So, sorry. So, what was the most challenging thing about raising teenagers? I like to think about that. Um, thankfully, <laughs> uh, well, once you put into them the best you can the Word of God, you kind of have to. You have to sort of, well, you have to trust at a point and let them, you know, they're going to go and it's on them to make their decisions and to follow what they've been taught. Um, if you know you put a good foundation on them, uh, you kind of can rest in that. But, um, hmm. I'm really thinking, I want to say my kids were just so angels that they did. <laughs> what was the most rewarding uh, thing about raising teenagers? Can I go back to that last one? Oh, question? yep, yep, you can. Sorry. Well, one thing I remember is you, Anthony, having some challenges. Um, you was having some challenges in school or whatever it was, and I remember- Per usual. Having, <laughs> nah. I remember you was having, uh, you know, problems with, um, what was it, self-esteem or, um, you was having some problems, I don't know. It was a lot of, Even yeah. when you was younger, I sure it was so much when you were a teenager. But it was kind of tough, well, that, that was one challenge. I remember one time. <laughs> I was the one challenge, y'all. <laughs> I do remember one time where, when you, uh, I could feel for you. I mean, you had a challenge in school. Um, there was a, I think you felt like you couldn't fight anybody or defend yourself or something like that. Um, <clears throat> and um, it was tough for me because I was thinking about the scriptures where, <laughs> you know, knowing how Jesus teaches to, you know, if someone smites you on your right cheek, cheek you turn to him the other. And, um, you know, basically to overcome evil with good. And so one part of me wanted to tell, <laughs> wanted to tell you, look, this is what you do <laughs> when such and such happened. Uh, and then uh, knowing God, what God says, I'm like, I don't want to go against God's word. So I had to just, I just had to let God's word do the work. And, uh, I, you know, I wanted to, you know, there was things that, Maybe it was something maybe I could end up being. It's, it's not you going and retaliating, but you know, maybe me or your mother can go and uh, check situations out in school. Or somebody, if they're bullying you or just doing things that aggravate you or whatever, because they know you're not going to hit them back or whatever it was. But <laughs> I do remember that that was a pretty tough challenge to, to not encourage you to go forth and you know retaliate and do things um against what god's word would say do it, it was it was tough for me to <laughs> to to hold back and and just say just do what what god's word says do we gonna believe that and just go on with that and um, um that was a challenge but <clears throat> Thank God you got through it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Do you see yourself in any of your children? And what are some of the similarities? You look like me. And <laughs> <laughs> you got some looks, features of me and you. And, but you act way different than me. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, but I see. You know, uh, I see my features in you as far as my looks. Um, and uh, and you're, I'm, you know, I'm proud of you, how you, you know, you come up and you're lively and, and uh, I don't think you more, of, you seem to be more of an extrovert than I am. And I was more of an introvert. You seem to be more of an extrovert um, and you seem to, you always did, even as a little kid, I noticed you were more of a social person. 
um, you enjoy the company and stuff. Um, <clears throat> it's a good thing. But, uh, yeah, yeah, you, uh, you pursue things. Uh, I think that's one of my attributes is that I see in you is determination. Um, putting putting the efforts in, making doing things, making <laughs> uh, making efforts to work hard at something, something that you want to achieve. Um, I see that in you. And that's that's in me too. Yeah, I was gonna say I think that's in you too. I appreciate that, Dad. Yes, sir. <laughs> That means a lot because you probably you're probably the most hardworking person <laughs> that I know, and yeah, just always doing things to the T. So that perfectionist part of me that I always want to do better, I definitely think that's one of the attributes that that I got from you. What characteristics, as a father, do you feel that you are passing on to your sons? That number one. <clears throat> that number one thing I keep talking about is seeking to please God. Uh, you know, pattern your life in His direction and and uh, when it's all said and done on earth, you want to know, you want to, you definitely want to have achieved pleasing God. That's that I feel is the most important thing for any of us to do, and then I hope that I'm portraying to my children to be. So what advice do you have for a father who may not know how to reach out to their team? Hmm. First pray and tell God about your <clears throat> pray and ask God to help you with whatever anxieties you have that or anything in life. Um, if, you know, the Bible teaches us in Philippians four and six, to be anxious for nothing, but by everything and everything with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, make your request known to God. So if anything is a challenge to you, <clears throat> such as reaching out to your team, um, take it to God, cause he's the expert. He, he made him, he made us, created us and knows us in and out. So. Uh, give it to him, ask it to be given, seeking you should find, knocking the door will be open. So do that. I mean, don't just pray and ask God to do it and then just sit back. You want to sit down and talk to him. You know, do that for a start. Try to probe and find out what's wrong. They may be trying to cover something up that they don't want you to know. Maybe they don't want to hurt you or something. And maybe they're in something that they think it's best not to tell you about or something, but <clears throat> whatever it is, you can take it to God in prayer and um, you know, pray on it and do your best with whatever you have in your power to do to make the situation better. And, um, you know, go from there. Yes. What scripture do you recommend for anyone who wants to restore a relationship with their teenager, child, or with their own parent? Well, regardless of the relationship, <clears throat> I would go back when I go, we talk about re reconciliation. I think about what Jesus taught. Um, Jesus taught that if in that day and time they would, they would offer sacrifices. And he said that <clears throat> if you're at the altar and uh, there you remember, if you're at the altar to offer a, a sacrifice to the Lord, and there you remember that your brother has some all against you. He said, leave your gift at the altar, go to him and first be reconciled with your brother and then come offer your gift. So <clears throat> don't try to serve God. Well, basically what I'm saying is uh, what the scripture is telling us, it's, it's our relationship with each other is very important. So if we've done something where we need to be reconciled, we need to make it a priority, a high priority to leave everything else and go get that thing right. I want to be free. I need to get that right. So one, confess your sins like the Bible 
In Proverbs, it tells us, he who has his sin shall not prosper, but he, confess, he who confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. So if you sin, confess. If you've done somebody wrong, go to them, tell them, look, I'm sorry, and be sorry. Don't just say it, but hopefully be sorry. You're sorry and repent, you know. In other words, my mind is to never do that again. Um, <clears throat> I'm not, I don't intend to keep doing that. Um, I've, you know, that's behind me. So I'm asking you to forgive me and give me a chance. I would say too, for some person who's, uh, if, if there's someone out there who, you know, they feel like, you know, your life is, you got deal, you got dealt a bad, um, what do you call it? A bad deck of cards in life. <clears throat> Just know this, no matter who we are, and whether we have parents, or whether we're orphans or whoever, whatever, we have God and God is, you know, he can, he can fix any situation. He is nothing too hard for God. So whatever your problem is, those of us who have parents and, and uh, you know, good upbringing, we still have problems. And those who don't have parents in the home or, you know, good upbringing, some people, you know, their parents were, you know, alcoholics or something. And, um, but God, God can, I was watching something about Mike Tyson uh, yesterday, how he, that. he became a, the world heavyweight champion and reigned pretty long or good for a good while. And he, he grew up in a very tough uh, situation with his parents, drunkenness and just, uh, but, but basically I'm saying all that just to say, no matter what our situation is, we can look to God and nothing's too hard for him. So we can put our, we all have to put our trust in him and he can make some of the worst situations, he can bring out the best out of it. Um, so that's what I just want to encourage you with. If you got God, you you win it. You're on the winning side. You can win. So God bless you. Hope we said something to help you. Thank you so much, Deacon Tony and Anthony, for allowing us to sit in on your conversation, so to speak. Um, Daddy, thank you for being there for us and always teaching us the word of God and sharing all your stories with us. So we appreciate you. Happy early Father's Day. Happy early Father's Day to all the fathers out there, all the new fathers, all of y'all. Okay. We love you. Happy Father's Day. Hey, so today there's no team tea, but I would like you to send in videos of either you, you and your father doing your favorite TikTok together or... Um, just a video of you saying Happy Father's Day to your father or you and your father doing something fun, okay? So send in those videos either to my email, which will be here, or my phone, and I'm not putting that on, <laughs> I'm not putting that on YouTube, okay? Um, but you can email me if you need my phone number, how about that? 30 Minutes of Reflection. Today, all we're asking you to do is to sit down with your father, your father figure, your grandpa, your uncle. Just sit down and have a conversation. They're not always going to be there. So cherish every moment you have with them. Hug them every time you get the opportunity. Love on them. Give them things. Let them know you love them. That is all you need to do for today's reflection. All right. Have a good one and I will see you next week. Bye. Hey, what's up, teenagers? Uh, my name is Anthony Nickens. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Brother Tony Nickens, Anthony Nickens. And Anthony today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try again. Sit down with your father, your uncle, your dad. I just said father. Hey, your stomach is. <laughs> What'd you eat? Oh. <laughs> <It's> the second <laughs> time. <laughs>